All right, thank you for staying with the Monday Report Town Hall session. I see a lot of your feedback. I'll try to squeeze them in real quick. Vincent Kigen here says, XCJ has done his best. He has made judiciary better. Building of courtrooms is one of his achievements. Ongera Maraga, Mungu Kupe Maisha Mema na Marefu. All right, let's see what else you're saying here on Twitter real quick. Jeep Masko says he was more honest at work and did not discriminate against anyone. The one who remains deserves to have pillars like Maraga. He will be remembered for his courage and tenacity in the times of the presidential election decision. And Aisha Kelly says he's a man who upheld the truth and justice at all costs. All right, let's see. Nicholas Mudui here says, retired CJ David Maraga will be remembered for nullifying presidential election and differing with the head of state on a number of occasions was a clear indication that he was committed to ensuring judiciary was independent. Victor Rukus says CJ Maraga was a God-fearing leader in the Supreme Court who will be remembered for his acts in putting his country first, regardless of the opposition that he faced. Kajama, you're the one who brought up the issue of administration. I'm, correct me if I'm thinking like a layman here. We still have a lot of backlog of cases. There was no performance management system within the judiciary that then assesses what magistrates and judges do and base it on the number of cases that they actually dispense with. I mean, that is something that would have worked if we knew that these judges are supposed to be dispensed with this number of cases within this particular time. But we still see a lot of backlog. Administratively, did he fail in that area? Uh, Trevor, I can say that uh, for four years uh, during uh, Chief Justice Maraga's tenure, I was uh, the chair of the Nairobi branch of the Law Society of Kenya. And I did get uh, several occasions to interact with the Chief Justice directly. Uh, the first thing I would say is that he was very open to receiving ideas. I think one of the things he really helped in the judiciary was uh, the issue of public participation. Uh, stakeholders, you'd listen to stakeholders. He was ready to engage court users. He was ready to engage us, lawyers, the law society, and, and even his fellow judges. So I think he was very good in that. Uh, and second, you've mentioned an interesting point, which is on the question of performance management. And, and I must say that uh, that was an issue that I personally raised with him on several occasions. Um, and not just with him, I raised it with members of the Judicial Service Commission, I raised it with some of the other judges in the judiciary leadership in the High Court and the Court of Appeal. Uh, the importance and the urgency to have a comprehensive uh, judicial performance management system that is not just managed confidentially and secretly by the judiciary, but that is transparent and open to court users. And I must say that uh, that has been one of the areas of some frustration, that the process of implementing that judicial performance management system has been rather slow. Um, the process of trying to deal with uh, complaints against judicial officers. And I used to say that there should be both complaints and compliments, probably more compliments than complaints. Yeah. But the process of receiving and processing feedback from court users has been rather anemic. And my hope is that uh, because the institution is built by every leader, uh, Chief Justice Willie Mutunga did his bit, uh, Chief Justice uh, David Maraga has done his bit, that as we get to the next Chief Justice, yeah. uh, this is an area that will be focused on and will be strengthened because it's very critical. But one thing I can say, uh, Trevor, before I conclude, is that Chief Justice Maraga actually uh, came out very strongly on dealing with the perennial problem of judicial backlog. And uh, he, he set up uh, performance standards for his judicial officers. He told them, I don't want to hear of any case that is more than three years old in the judiciary. And for a period of time, especially in the uh, 20, late 2018 and 2019, you could see that there was a lot of effort in dealing with the issue of backlog. Various strategies were deployed, including court and next mediation, including uh, strategies to digitize the judiciary, which uh, faced several challenges, but eventually took off, yeah. including some level of performance management of judicial officers. However, when the COVID-19 pandemic uh, struck in 2020, when it uh, was declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization, it disrupted all the plans. Yeah. 
And you could say that the backlog that uh, the judiciary had started dealing with uh, actually uh, faced uh, serious uh, reversals yeah. because of what happened during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. and, and some of this is understandable. So I think I would say uh, on the positive side that Chief Justice Maraga laid a strong foundation for the future uh, initiatives and efforts to deal comprehensively with the, with the case backlog okay. that uh, has been with us since independence. All right. Chigai, surely the backlog cannot all be blamed on the lack of resources, can it? No. Somebody um, is sleeping on the job. <laughs> Um, fair enough. Um, backlog of cases goes both ways. Judiciary, uh, when it comes to criminal cases, we have the prosecutors and, of course, the litigants on the other side. So that issue of backlog of cases cannot be entirely blamed on the judiciary. And uh, we just need to be fair to the judiciary because there was a report that was issued by the judiciary on certain matters which were, had not proceeded for a long time. And we realized the office of the DPP was the one which was actually stalling the cases. They were never ready to proceed. Now, it will be unfair to blame the issues of backlog of cases on the judiciary entirely. And each organ uh, or each um, uh, individual within that um, management of cases from yeah. the time they are filed, from the time of investigations to the time we present them to court, we need to all take responsibility when it comes to backlog of cases. Having said that, I happened to have reviewed a newspaper advert on um, technology for effective management or service delivery within the judiciary sometime last year, before COVID. And when I reviewed that particular advert, one of the key things that I noted, the judiciary was keen to completely overhaul its, um, its IT network system. And if that system was fully implemented, I'm sure because of COVID, the, the, that particular um, system was never put in place. They were putting in place an ERM system, Enterprise mm -hmm. Risk Management System. What that meant is that from case management to financial um, application within yes. the administra administrative uh, platform of the judiciary, they are going to ad address most of the gaps uh, that we have been complaining about. Um, coding of cases and different files, give it to the judiciary. Currently, as we speak, the reason as to why disappearances of court cases have gone down is because the judiciary put in place a um, case management system where files right now are being coded, depending on uh, which area of practice or which particular court those particular files um, are, are being addressed. Yeah. So Maraga took a lot of time to try and address the gaps. And um, one thing I want to uh, say is that institutional transformations take time. Yeah. You know, it's not a one day um, uh, work. You'll find you had a five-point agenda in terms of addressing certain issues of gaps within the institution, and you managed to attain one. I remember some of the things that Maraga picked up, and that's the good thing again about leadership, you know, and governance and management of institutions. You pick from where your predecessor left, you know, actualize what the uh, the, the predecessor had started and finish, and put in your goals that you want to achieve. Yeah. And you remember during Mutunga's time, ICT and technology was key. Mediation was key. Started then, but finalized by Maraga. Yeah. That shows he was very focused okay. in terms of service delivery. The question is the speed and why we still have those gaps today. Yeah. So for me, give it to him. The e-platform in yeah. terms of um, now it to, for us to institutionalize the e-platform in terms of how we manage court cases. I, w I would wish to take you to a country like um, Kigali, Rwanda. They don't go to court, not unless you're going for a hearing. They have automated their system and it's working. Go to Europe, go to the UK. You're given time allocation. You miss your time, you miss out. 
if you're given 30 minutes to present whatever it is you want to present in court, you have your 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's work in progress. Mm -hmm. I think it will take some time, yeah. but given um, given the fact that there's already goodwill in terms of us progressing what has already been started, yeah. and in terms of the judiciary embracing transformative change, which does not take a day note, we have courts all over this country. Okay. If we were to implement, let's say, an e-platform, it takes time. Yeah. It has to be tried, it has to be tested, it has to fail, yeah. it has to be improved yeah. until it gets to work. And when we talk of small institutions where you have a staff force of less than 20, you can still manage any transformative changes that you want to do within an institution. Yeah. But we are talking of an institution which has more than 50 codes in this country. In areas where network is a problem, you know, yeah. we have uh, courts in some regions in this country where the network system is completely down. Okay. We have certain courts which are completely inaccessible. We had courts where rains were raining in those courts. You know, for a very long time, the Mombasa High Court was in such a bad shape. Yeah. But during Maraga's tenure, we have seen some changes and quite a number of courts have now been um, uh, unveiled. Okay. Now, we are now moving out of the physical court to now the structures within the courts that can actually help the litigants, the claimants, yeah. and the judges themselves to dispense justice and at a very faster rate. Mm. So now, COVID has taught us that at this point in time, we now need to think of what next. And I think that is where we are. Yeah. Um, if we are talking of um, the IT platform, right now you'll find jobs all IT officers in this country, you'll find each and every court now needs an IT personnel yeah. to sit through and ensure that the court proceedings are um, going on well. Yeah. You know, it will take time, okay. but trust you me, um, we we'll get the there. Right direction. We right. are walking in the right direction. So, yeah. And again, allow me to say one more thing. Yeah. When it comes to transparency and dispensation of justice, and um, even reducing uh, this big monkey called corruption yeah. uh, that we all talk about. I highly believe by going the E uh, or rather the IT and take way, we are going to solve a lot of corruption related okay. uh, issues within the judiciary uh, system. All right. Yeah. So that, that's for Maraga. Now let's take, a, let's have some foresight because we're running out of time in the next 10 minutes. DCJ Mwilu Omdata is the one who's now the acting chief justice. Do you have confidence in her to begin with? May I be excused from answering that question? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should she ascend then to become? We the are in CJ? court with chance. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming you will also pass that question. Uh, I'm, I'm acting for the Judicial Service Commission in uh, two cases. Yeah. Uh, and Omtata is in one of those cases, uh, which are on the question of um, the acting uh, Chief Justice. And, and that is a, a lady, a lady Justice Philomena Mwilo. Uh, the Ju Judicial Service Act uh, statutorily uh, says that the Deputy Chief Justice will act as the Acting Chief Justice, and she's taken over. Uh, today she was handed the instruments of power. Yeah. And in one of those two cases, Omtata is uh, challenging the constitutionality of that provision. Um, definitely, the intention of the framers of the constitution and even parliament when it passed that amendment to the judicial service act is to have as quickly as possible yeah. a substantive chief justice uh, who will go through the entire process of uh, recruitment by the judicial service commission and then um, after nomination presentation to the president and then the president presents the name to parliament for further vetting yeah. uh, before appointment. So I think what would be right for me to say is that uh, right now the deputy chief justice is the acting chief justice. We hope that she will continue uh, the trajectory of uh, chief justice uh, David Maraga yeah. during this interim period uh, as we uh, hopefully get another substantive uh, justice, Chief Justice, and any 
a person who is qualified, including the Deputy Chief Justice, yeah. who is now the Acting Chief Justice, including uh, various judges of the Supreme Court, of the Court of Appeal, of the High Court, including other lawyers who have distinguished themselves in other capacities, are entitled to apply yeah. and to, be, uh, to go through the process of human resource recruitment to see who is the fairest of them all yeah. and will become the next Chief Justice. So I think for now, yeah. uh, Kenyans can be reassured <coughs> that uh, there is a leadership in the uh, judiciary, yeah. there's an acting Chief Justice, and in the Judicial Service Commission, there was a vice chair who was one of the two nominees of the Law Society of Kenya, yeah. uh, Masi Deche, who I assume will also be acting as the chair of the Judicial Service Commission during the process of recruitment of the next Chief Justice. Yeah. And also uh, there is another vacancy in the Supreme Court after uh, Professor J.B. Ojuang, who was a Supreme Court judge, retired about a year ago. He's not yet been uh, replaced. So we are hoping those two vacancies will be filled. Yeah. Uh, in the short uh, term okay. and, and we hope that uh, the reconstituted Supreme Court will rise up to the challenge okay. and the expectations of Kenyans. Okay, okay yeah. now that you don't want to respond to that, <laughs> then let's rephrase that. The person who's coming in as the CJ, what kind of a person should we be looking for? Shouldn't this be yes, someone who's perceived uh, to be as if white you look, as you if, know? if you look at, there's a major, major, major structural fault in the judiciary that you have, you have failed to distinguish between the administrative role of a judge and the judicial role of a judge. So most of these judges are trained to be lawyers, not to be administrators. So I would look at a way that the Judicial Service Act maybe needs to be amended to require expertise in public administration for those people who take on administrative positions like the chief justice, like the principal judges. There's a Kenya School of Government they offer very good lessons and training in public administration. If that was to be put in, in uh, as a requirement for promotion to these offices, I'm sure many, many judicial officers would take time to study public administration yeah. so, that, so that when you become a chief justice, you know what public administration is. And if you look at a lot of the things that you are complaining about, so that pe people get in and begin learning on the job and they're very senior, senior jobs. So I think that we need to look at that going forward. I also think that uh, going forward, we need to look at the Court of Appeal. Yeah. You know that when you look at the law, if you come to the High Court, the Constitution creates spe specialized courts. We have got the same status as the High Court. Yeah. That's the, the, the Labor Court and the Land and Environment Court the Employment and Labor Relations Court and Land and Employment Court. Now you find that that, special, that specialization is not there at the appellate level. Some countries have them. And I think Kenya needs that because you find that there's a, there's a general attitude now that the, when you look at some judgment sometimes, you, you tend to think that the Court of Appeal, yeah. and like the High Court, we have come to realize that these courts have got this kind of mandate and have got power to, to adjudicate constitutional issues that arise within that area, you'll find that the Court of Appeal tends to look at these courts as maybe not of the same status as the High Court, and there'll be need to have, and even you saw the last recruitment, they left out all judges from these other courts. None of them was picked who had applied for to, go to, the, to be appointed to the Court of Appeal. So I think there'll be need maybe to create divisions within this Court of Appeal. Yeah to address these specialist areas so that we can have recruitment to that court based on specialization of articles so, so that there's no point having appearing in the high court yeah. before judges who are specialized in environment issues and whatever because they, 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 they are their study and they, they are recruited on the basis of their specialization. Yeah. Then you come to the court of appeal and you get a general practitioner. Yeah. Was no so it's like coming from a consultant in a yeah. hospital, an expert consultant, then you're going to a GP, you see. So it doesn't work. So I think that uh, we need to look at the Court of Appeal yeah. and restructure it so that that expertise and that what you have gained in the High Court in terms of having specialized courts can also be realized at the Court of Appeal. Then okay. the, Supreme, the Supreme Court can remain the way it is. All right. But for public court, the Court of Appeal also looks at 
original evidence when it is handling at the first appeal and what have you, mm. that expertise that is in the lower courts should also be reflected there. And also to give a chance to the court judges practicing in the labor court and in the employment court the opportunity to be appointed to the court of appeal. Okay. Chigai, what kind of person should we be looking for in the next CJ? Um, just to mention, let me touch on what... Uh, uh, my brother here has said about training of judicial officers. We already have JTI, Judicial uh, Training Institute. So it's an issue of um, improving the curriculum to add certain um, uh, training that may be in line to the public administration and management, um, um, if it's not there. But I highly believe uh, JTI already undertakes certain training upon judges and magistrates being appointed. When it comes to the kind of chief justice I wish to have, I think for a change, um, maybe we should get a chief justice from the sitting uh, judges of the uh, Court of Appeal. Why not? Um, the reason as to why I say that, it's because they're already in the system. The previous, uh, we had, uh, um, William Tunga, who was from out. We've had Maraga, who was from out. Maybe for a change, why not? Let's try someone from within. Okay. So that, because there's a lot when it comes to managing that particular office, including the welfare of judges and magistrates. Um, again, I would wish to see a person of high integrity, a person who's honest and bold, you know, and uh, of course, someone who's very sober. Yeah and stayed fast. When you mention integrity, this is someone who's not been mentioned in any case, right? Definitely. Um, you know, that office is not just any office. And uh, when you take that crown, I think it's important you take the crown um, with minimum friction from the word go. And again, when you have a line of ethical questions surrounding you as an individual within that particular office, then there are high chances of you being manipulated. Um, so, if you ask me, I think we need a person of high integrity. Okay, Kanjama? Uh, I would like to start where my sister Harriet has, <laughs> uh, has left off. Uh, I, one thing I liked about uh, Chief Justice William Mutunga, he had a very strong sense of institutional integrity. And I think he did uh, a transformation of the judiciary by getting the judges to also have that strong sense of uh, their decisional independence and also the institutional independence of the judiciary. So that is the idea of institutional integrity. Uh, one thing I liked about uh, Chief Justice David Maraga was yeah. a very strong sense of individual or personal integrity and, and personal integrity in his life, in his values, and the way he implemented them. So I think the next Chief Justice has to marry these uh, two dimensions of institutional, very strong sense of institutional integrity and individual integrity. Mind you, I'm not uh, contrasting the two to say that they were lacking the other. <laughs> I'm just trying to, to dramatize yeah. uh, that integrity has to be the first quality, an impeachable integrity, individual as well as the sense of institutional integrity. I think the second issue is something that uh, uh, Omtata has mentioned briefly, which is uh, demonstrable and proven leadership ability. And leadership includes governance. So somebody who has demonstrated that they are able to govern. And within the hierarchy of the judiciary, surprisingly, there are many leadership structures. Every court has a that has a high court, has a resident judge who does administration or management. Every magistrate's court has a, a chief magistrate or a magistrate in charge, again, yeah. who's involved in, in administration and management. At every court level, a Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, High Court, the Special Courts, you have judicial officers who have been um, given roles of administration. And even among private practitioners, you have lawyers who have demonstrable leadership ability. So I think that issue of leadership ability is crucial. And I'd like to say that I agree with Omtata on one thing. The fact that you are a good doctor doesn't mean you are a good hospital administrator. 
the fact that you are a good pilot doesn't mean you will not drive Kenya Airways to the ground or, or deeper than the ground. You will mm. dig a big hole for them. So, so to, to be a good administrator is crucial and we need someone with leadership ability. But I think the third attribute is you cannot be a good uh, chief justice if you are, have high integrity, you are a good leader, but you lack competence or excellence in judging yeah. because to be a chief justice first you are a judge so we need someone with a very sound grasp of the law with a clear demonstrable philosophy uh, someone who has competence in the act of judging because i think uh, the most critical uh, form of leadership is leadership by example yeah. we need a chief justice who loves hearing cases making decisions, crafting jurisprudence together with his or her brother and sister judges in the Supreme Court. So I think those three qualities are key. But allow me to add a fourth one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it is a, a very indefinable or very difficult to measure concept, but it is very critical. It is a form of wisdom. Uh, we need a chief justice who is able to interact with Wanjiku um, when the Chief Justice goes on the tours of different parts of the country, different courts, is able to interact with the leadership of this country, uh, with the President, with the Speaker, with the Senators, the Members of Parliament, with Cabinet Secretaries, without, without losing yeah. their cool, okay. without bending their principles, but at the same time, with a healthy dose of pragmatism. Not Soft in decision things. making, yeah. but in the rapport and coordination, uh, administrative task, so okay. that we can get uh, these judges, the 40 judges appointed. Okay. We need an additional 100 judges. We get 200 magistrates appointed. We yeah. get the judiciary fund working. Uh, we get institutional committee, which mm -hmm. means good relations. Yeah. Good relations doesn't mean the, the judiciary doesn't decide against the legislature or against the executive, but it means generally good relations between the arms and organs of government, government. Okay. that the constitutional commissions are strengthened so yeah. that they can do their role as guardians of the constitution okay. and so on. So I think those are critical All right. uh, qualities that we need to look for in the next Chief Justice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. Charles Kanjama, Advocate of the High Court, Okio Mtata, Executive Director, Kenyans for Justice and Development, Harit Chigai, former LSK Vice President, thank you so much. I see a lot of your feedback coming through here. Nyamogo Gogni says, where do we place a land dispute case registered in 1983 at the Kisi High Court civil case number 244 slash 96, which has never been determined to date. This is more than 37 years later. Kindly ask the lawyers, is this due to corruption in the judiciary? Chigai, one line. Um, is that due to corruption, a case that was registered in 1983, it hasn't happened up until now? Well, first, it's... I would wish to know why, because that okay. is a very, very long, long time. So ago. where does he go? Someone like Nyamogo Gogni, who has uh, this case pending. Well, I think he needs to rekindle it. Maybe he filed the case and he went quiet. Okay. So we need to know why the case is still pending. So he should go back to the. He needs to uh, go the, back to the to court where? High Court. Yes. Okay, and start from there. Yeah. All right, Nyamogo, you had that. Let's see, Patrick Kokonya says CJ David Mukenani Maraga will be the judge fairly by current and future generations. He did his best under undesirable circumstances. All right. Kipleting Manuela says retired CJ Maraga will be remembered for defending our constitution, standing for the truth and justice. And Engineer Lazaro says former CJ Maraga has done well. In African history, he's the first black African judge who has shown courage of standing up against intimidation by the executive. Flavian Mulama says, I will forever remember the now retired CJ as a judge who upheld the constitution and the rule of law while being guided at all times by the fear of God. That's where we have to leave it for now. We've run out of time. This has been Monday Town Hall Report. Thank you so much for making time. Let's do this again tomorrow. My name is Trevor Mbija. Always a pleasure having you with us. Good night for now.